Hey everybody, welcome to Books Are Sick. This is a week I'm not actually even sure, but thank you for being here. I'm a day late because I forgot that yesterday was Sunday. <laughs> uh, it is Canadian Thanksgiving up here, and I actually always forget that that is just a Canadian thing. The American Thanksgiving is... Uh, what, late November or something like that? So I I think in my head I was like, well, I'll do it Monday because everybody's off on Monday. But then realized this morning that's uh, only true for, <laughs> for people up here. But anyways, it is week 40. I just checked. So thanks for being here. Week 40. Books are sick. Whatever. Um, I've got my coffee here in a beautiful floral mug. So we're just going to enjoy this together. Enjoy just a nice slow day off. A beautiful Monday. I can't find my hat. I need a haircut. It's windy outside. It's kind of cold, actually. I don't know why I said it was beautiful. But we've got coffee. We've got stuff. So let's talk about the stuff. I am going to tell you about some book pickups that I got because I have a lot of them. A lot of book pickups today because it was my birthday last Wednesday. And so because of that, my wife asked me, you know, what do you want to do for your birthday? And I said, to be completely honest, the only thing I really would love to do is just go book shopping, which uh, may not come as a surprise, but, you know, book shopping is probably my favorite thing to do. And, um, you know, aside from reading and aside from, you know, just being alive, that's also nice. I went to three different bookstores, all kind of more local independent bookstores in my city of Hamilton. I went to J.H. Gordon Books. I went to this other place called Epic Books. And then I also went to this other place called The Printed Word. All fantastic bookshops, all somewhat different in what they offer, and um, yeah, I feel like I got a really good haul here, so. Oh yeah, that first, that was my, that's my first sip of coffee today. You know when you're having a slow morning and you have that first sip of coffee and you can just feel it just like splintering down your body? <laughs> I love that feeling. Okay, and I just had that. Real quick tonight, guess what I'm doing tonight? I'm going to see... Uh, a band with my wife. I wonder if you can guess who it might be. Mm -bop. <laughs> we are going to see Hanson tonight. And uh, and Phantom Planet is opening. Phantom Planet are the band that does the California song for the opening of the OC. So it's going to be pretty... Did you see that? There's a one fruit fly in here. It is fruit fly season here as well. Um, so, oh my gosh, they are driving me nuts. But yeah, Hanson tonight. Oh, also, I've got a... My current reads I can talk about, and the Stephen King poll as well. Uh, this, we are having Stephen King month next month uh, for the book club, so I will share with you what we're doing with that. It's 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 kind of fun. It's been pretty exciting. I apologize right off the bat if this episode seems a little slower. I did kind of just wake up, throw on this jacket, try to find my hat, and <laughs> hit record. So I don't know. Maybe like maybe we'll embrace like a slower pace today. I don't know. We'll just cozy in. If you have a coffee. Get your coffee in front of you, put your hand on it, warm up your left or right hand, and let's uh, let's just get into this. Okay, so for some book pickups here, why don't we go through that first, because then I can get that out of the way. I did go uh, and see these Stephen King covers in person, and I've noticed this one here online. A few people have posted this in the Patreon, a few people... Uh, have posted it otherwise on social media and stuff like that. And I just think this cover is so cool. And I wasn't going to get it because I have a copy of The Shining. Although my copy of The Shining, for as much as I love this book, it is just the mass market paperback. It's the only copy I have of The Shining. And so my wife, Lindsay, bought this for me because she's the best. And so now I can just have this um, staring at me. I feel like this actually would be a great Christmas read. <laughs> just based off this cover and based off the book, honestly. Um... I love that. I'm a sucker for reissues with cool covers, so I uh, I picked that up. They also had a really cool one for Salem's Lot, so uh, if you do see those out in the wild, the Salem's Lot one is actually really neat, too. I don't, I can't show it to you because I didn't get it, but um, I also got a nonfiction book. I think my... No, I actually got two nonfiction books, I think. Yeah, two. This is called The Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe, and this is a situation where I've seen this book sitting on the on the main shelves for quite a while now but this is such an intimidating looking thing you know because it's about the history of the Sackler dynasty and if I'm being honest with you I don't even know what that is so I, I I don't know what that is I don't know any of the history there I don't know any of the story I don't know who those people are I don't know anything so 
Um, this uh, this is an intimidating read, but I did a quick Google on it just to maybe kind of hype myself up. And there are so many people out there saying this is one of their favorite, if not their favorite nonfiction read that they've ever read. They didn't know anything about it going in and they got totally hooked and sucked into it and couldn't put it down. I believe... Actually, I don't want to say anything because I can't really fully remember what people were saying. But so it was enough to pump me up to buy it, and uh, I've I've been wanting to get into some more nonfiction um, lately. So I, uh, I I did grab that. Okay, now let's move on here. I talked to the owner of Epic Books, and I you know my favorite question to ask people: What is especially if you're a bookstore owner? You know, what is your favorite book of all time? Out of curiosity, and she gave me two. Actually, she gave me three. The other one that I, I, I have not found yet was um, called The Amaz Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. I, uh, oh wait, spoiler, okay, <laughs> I did find that one, I'm an idiot. Uh, so, I found it, <laughs> she, was, she was like, this is one of my favorite books ever, but they didn't have a copy, and I guess they, they, they don't stay on the shelves for too long. So I went to another bookstore, and I did find it based on her recommendation, and uh this, uh, I have not a clue what this is about, but the margins here are terrifying. Small letters, small words. Um, yes, scary, scary, scary. And this is a pretty long book, too. I want to say this is up into the 700-page mark. But, you know, when a bookstore owner is that passionate about a book being her favorite book, it's kind of like, well, I'll bet this is actually probably pretty good. And the other one was uh, The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. I feel like a lot of people go with Kindred for their first Butler book. I've wanted to read Octavia Butler for quite some time. I've heard just the most incredible things about her writing, and I am just so eager to get into an Octavia Butler book. And she kind of recommended Parable of the Sower as be, uh, being your first one. And I did a little, a little extra research on the internet. That does seem to be a popular choice, so I'm looking forward to that. I got The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, just because it is October, we're coming up to Halloween, and this just looked like a fun time. I don't think I've ever seen this book um, out in the wild, so I'm, I'm excited to maybe read Sleepy Hollow. I did pick up Sleepy Hollow on VHS I, last, uh, what, last uh, week, a week or two ago, and I watched it with my kids, and uh, it was pretty fun. You know, they were like, oh my gosh, it's a guy with no head. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, oh, so you know what? Sorry, another. She gave me a few. The another favorite book of uh, the Epic Books owner is Fireweather: The Making of a Beast by John Valent. This is a. This is the other nonfiction book that I got. This is about. Um, this is about. I, I think a lot about climate change, but it's centered around the fires at Fort McMurray and kind of how that even happened. Uh, and apparently, John Valent's writing is just beautiful and uh, very gripping. So, looking forward to jumping into that one. Um, this one here, also, uh, The Knowing by Tanya Talaga. This is a, uh, really nicely laid out book here. This is a signed copy, so I was excited to pick that up. She's doing an event in our city soon, and, um, so, right down here it says, Beautiful and Heartbreaking, uh, The Knowing is a handbook for reaching beneath the myths of Canadian history. So, uh, I'm looking forward to experiencing that as well. I got Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This is uh, one of those books I just I hear quite a few people talk about. It pops up on my timeline a lot, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. So I picked it up so that I can eventually jump into it. I really like trying to get like a bit of an array of books when I'm doing like a solid day of book shopping, and I had the excuse of it being my B day. Not that that matters, but <laughs> to to kind of just go nuts, and so that's what I did. So Pachinko is another one that I got. Also at uh, the Printed Word, they had a first U.S. edition of the Silmarillion by Tolkien. And so I got it, because it's just so pretty, and I really have always loved that cover of the Sil Silmarillion. I don't know why, I just think it's really pretty, and I just love that it looks fake, but real, and I love, uh, you know, get a, get a bring back massive pictures of the authors on the back of the book, you know? Like, uh, all of Stephen King's books from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, there's just like a huge picture of him. That's all I want, I think that's cool. You know what else I picked up? I picked up um, Intermezzo. By Sally Rooney. This is the book everybody's talking about. It's everywhere. It's almost like you, you can't get away from it. I love it. You know, I, I think it's so cool. I saw this video, I think from the UK or like Ireland or something like that, where when this book came out, there were literally advertisements everywhere, like big billboards. And I just think that's so cool for a book to get that much uh, 
to be getting that much love, almost like a rock concert sort of thing. Man, I'm showing my edge. Almost like a rock concert, you know? <laughs> but uh, uh, So I picked up that one because I want to be a part of the conversation. Maybe hoping to read that one early November. You know, it's kind of one of those ones. I've never read Sally Rooney before, and a lot of people are like, well, don't start with Intermezzo. You know, maybe go normal people. But um, mm, why not go Intermezzo? You know, I want to be a part of the convo. I want to be current. Uh, just a couple more here. I got The Crossing by Cormac McCarthy. This is the only Cormac book that I don't have, so uh, that's why I picked that up. And it is the hardcover. Cormac is just... He's got to be, like, if I, I... I was trying to think the other day, like, if I had to put together, like, a top five authors so far, who would be on there? There are some obvious picks, for sure. Like, Steinbeck and King are on that list. Um, but who else would be there? I actually... I was trying to think, you know, Cormac might be on there. I'm not sure. Uh... I also just picked up this NYRB book called Fear, a Novel of World War One by Gabrielle Chevalier. To be totally honest with you, I just love NYRB books. Oh, come on. Come on. And I uh, grabbed it for that reason. <laughs> you know, I feel like I don't really know what this is about, but I just like adding to my NYRB collection on my shelf. It's uh, it's just nice to look at. I just I feel like it's just uh, I like the way that they've done their whole thing. Every, everything's kind of consistent. Everything looks somewhat the same, but unique in its own way. Um, so let's move on here. I got, uh, I wanted to, oh, you know what I wanted to tell you about is a book that I just randomly downloaded on my Kindle, um, yesterday that I've read, I've read 60 pages or so, so far. I just got sucked right into it. I read 60 pages yesterday and I will say, I don't know if you guys get like this too, but just for disclosure, I, whenever I start a book, even if it, it's like good, I, the, when you're just starting it, it's always like, you're always a little more hyped up. You're always like, ooh, I think this could be really good. So uh, whenever I start a new book, I do have that new book energy. And that doesn't always happen. You know, sometimes when I start a new book, I'm right away like, I don't like this at all. But, so I just wanted to preface that. I'm not too far, I'm not far enough into this to be hyping it as up, hyping it up as much as I'm going to. But I started reading The Terror by Dan Simmons. Now, or Simons? Simmons, Dan Simmons, The Terror. And I'm absolutely loving this so far. This is a historical fiction horror book that takes place in the Arctic. We're basically following this crew that are trying to discover the northern passage. I'm not, uh, I'm bad with history, but like the northern passage or something. They're stuck in the ice. This old ship and its crew are stuck in the ice up there and they're trying to survive. We're being introduced to the captain and just like a slowly slow rollout of all the characters and what's going on here. But it is so fantastic. The way uh, Dan S Simmons writes is really, really nice. It's really addicting. There's a lot of information, but it's very understandable. And it's very character driven so far, which I always really, really enjoy. Um, you know, I would say maybe I... I what was I doing? I was reading. I I downloaded it. It wasn't totally random. I was reading an article. I want to say from Esquire maybe about the top horror books of all time, and they had the terror listed at like number four or five, like really high up there. And so I was like, I feel like I heard of this, but I've never really looked into it. I saw it on Kindle, downloaded it, read the first chapter, and was like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's great. I can't. I don't. I only have it on Kindle, so I can't really like beautifully show it to you, but. Uh, check it out if you're looking for a, uh, a horror read this month and maybe you don't just want the classic like haunted house sort of thing. You want something unique and different with some history and um, and that sort of thing. It's great. It's I'm really, really enjoying that. I'm also still reading Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman. This has been really good. Um, I'm very much enjoying this. I, I think probably the only thing that I'm reminded of with this is that... I'm not a huge fan of reading like fights and battles and like and stuff like that. I do find myself nodding off a little bit uh, when those uh, when those happen. I feel like I felt the same way when I was reading a court of uh, a court of Th wings and ruin. I want to say it was this one where there's a, like a big battle at the end, and I was kind of like, <laughs> I, was, I, I just find I'm I'm not sure if that that could just be a me thing, but I do find when I'm reading battles, I get a little sleepy. So that would be my only personal critique of it otherwise really really fantastic so far I'm, I'm glad that i'm finally reading this a lot of people really truly love this book and i can see why um yeah so kind of a fun one to actually now that i'm thinking about it i'm reading two historical fiction 
horror books at the same time, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Both very, very different. You know, one were, were at sea, stuck in the ice, and the other one were in, uh, were in Paris. So, you know, during the Black Plague. So, um, yeah. Those are those are my current reads at the moment. It's a really fun one-two punch. I would definitely recommend trying out one of the two at least. Uh, and then I was just going to tell you about the Stephen King poll and show you kind of where... Well, not show you, but tell you where we're at. As I mentioned, uh, next month is Stephen King month in the uh, in the Sick Book Club, which is hosted over on the page, Rion. And so what I decided to do, I the whole the whole time I was kind of like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna like pick, you know, ten ones that I haven't read, or I don't know something like that. But then I was thinking like there are a lot of people in the book club, and a lot of them have not read a lot of Stephen King, if any Stephen King. So why not put every single Stephen King book into the poll that we vote on. And so that's what I did. Uh, that's what I did. And I split split it up into three eras. So we got like the first era of Stephen King, second era, and final era. So how I, how I worked it is the top four from the first era, the top four from the second era, and the top two from the final era, just because there were fewer books. Uh, we'll move on to a final poll here, uh, onto the next poll, and then there will be a top three. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll tell you what kind of moved on here. Some surprises for sure um, for me. So for era one here, the winners were, the four winners were Salem's Lot, The Stand. We had a few lunatics voting for The Stand to be a book club book, which I'm all for personally, but I think that that is a tall ask for the majority of people. That book is very, very long. I believe it's the longest Stephen King book and one of the longest books that exists probably. It is, uh, it's up there, but Hey, it moved on. Pet Cemetery may not come as a surprise. That moved on. And Misery also moved on. Now, the surprises for me here were um, Carrie. I thought Carrie was going to do a lot better just because I feel like name brand, like it's very well known. I thought The Shining was going to do a lot better. And for some reason, I thought It was going to do a lot better too. It only got 2% of the vote. And you know, I, I could use the argument of like, oh, well, it's a really long book. People don't want to read the long... But The Stand made it through. And It, I feel like, is probably the most well-known... Gotta be one of the like top three most well-known Stephen King books. And it is Halloween, and it is kind of one of the more spooky ones. So I'm surprised that one didn't do better. But, hey, whatever. Uh, for Era 2, the, the, the four that moved on were Under the Dome, which right off the bat was a surprise for me. 11.22.63, not a surprise. The Green Mile, not a surprise that that moved on. But the big surprise for me in this era is that Mr. Mercedes moved on. And the only reason I find that surprising is because there are books like Duma Key, um, Bag of Bones, Dolores Claiborne, Gerald's Game, Rose Matter, Des uh, maybe not Desperation, but The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. There's so many books in here that I, I'm surprised... Mr. Mercedes beat, but it did. So I don't know. I like it. Whatever. And then for the final era here, just the top two that moved on were Revival and Fairy Tale. The surprises there would be that the Institute and Billy Summers didn't move on because I feel like in every single comment section I've ever had where I'm mentioning Stephen King, Billy Summers gets mentioned. <laughs> every people want me to read Billy Summers so badly. Uh, but it didn't move on. It did get close. It did get close. But Fairy Tale and Revival are the two that moved on from there. And so we are currently in the second round of the poll, the top 10. So the top 10 looks like Misery, Pet Cemetery, The Stand, Salem's Lot, Mr. Mercedes, The Green Mile, Under the Dome, 1122-63, Fairy Tale, and Revival. It may not surprise you that Mr. Mercedes and Fairy Tale have the fewest votes. I don't think that would come as a surprise to most people. The top three right now which is not a surprise in the least, is Misery, Pet Cemetery, and 1122-63, probably the three Stephen King books that I've mentioned the most. So, um, yeah, I'm happy about that. 1122-63 is a clear leader, and I think I'm excited about that. I don't know what's going to take it, because Pet Cemetery and Misery do have a lot of votes as well, and I just think it would be really fun to read any one of these, but 1122-63, to experience that in a book club, uh, I feel like would be a really, really good time. So we'll see what happens, but if it wins, I'll be more than happy to reread it. I actually meant to reread it earlier this year. Um, I kind of did a video where I was like, I've never re really reread a book outside of on writing. I've read on writing a couple times, but 
I really wanted to reread a, a book, and I said I was going to do eleven twenty two sixty three, and I read the first few chapters, and then I just got too busy. But uh, maybe maybe doing that at the end of it all. So yeah, so that's what's going on over on the book club, uh, and that I don't know. That might be all I really have to uh, share with you. Oh, actually, you know what? I found some more books I can share you that I got. <laughs> I did get more. They were hiding here. I got... Uh, I love these little Penguin Classics books, uh, especially when they um, are the mini ones like this. So I got uh, The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. I just thought that looked really, really cool. Uh, these are just great shelf, shelfy looking ones. And I got The Lagoon by Joseph Conrad. Joseph Conrad's an author I haven't read yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to jumping into to that one. And check this out. Speaking of Carrie, found this... Uh, let's see if I can open it here so it's, there's no shimmer. Um, found this kind of vintage classic horror cover here that I've actually never seen before, and I just thought it was really neat. Um, just an old paperback, nice and stinky. <laughs> and just a cool-looking copy there. So those are the... Yeah, oh my gosh. Very fortunate Lindsay treated me to uh, the majority of these, and uh, it was a great day. Just a great day, you know? Is there any better day than just drinking coffee and buying books? I don't believe that there is. You could maybe tell me uh, of something better, but I already disagree. <laughs> okay, so yeah, plans for this week. I got to get a haircut. Uh, I almost got one the other day, but I f chickened out and I just kept walking. But uh, that is uh, that is primarily on my list. I'm in the peak of busy season in my in my life right now. October is always insane. I've got so many weddings to edit, so many sessions to edit, and so many more sessions and weddings coming. Um, and so it's kind of like a never-ending cycle of like, ah, <laughs> right now. But, uh, you know, so that's why my brain's a little scattered and I um, kind of forgot that yesterday was Sunday. But, you know, guys, thank you for tuning in. I love doing this. Um, apologies if this one seemed a little slower. I'm uh, still just waking up here, but um, I, I, I uh, will see you guys next Sunday for week 41, and we will have our Stephen King book winner, so I can share that with you next week and um, and whatever else. Maybe I'll be done The Terror. At this rate, I might be. It's a very long book, The Terror is. It's a, uh, you know, I, th I believe I checked the, I always check audiobooks to get a really good feel for how long a book's going to be, because sometimes you pick up a book and it's 700 pages, and it's sh technically shorter than another book you have that's like 400 pages, you know? It's all based on margins and paper size and paper thickness and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard to like just look at a book and get a real good idea for how long it's going to be. So I always look at Audible or wherever audiobooks are and just like look at the little thing and see how long it is to get a good idea. I believe The Terror is about 30 hours. So, you know, it's about three, what would you say, like three, three and a half books in one uh, for your average book. So it's a, it's a, it's a big one, but I think it's going to be worth it. I'm really loving it so far. And I love big books. I love long books. I love I love the immersibility of just being stuck in a story for that long. So, um, anyways, maybe I'll maybe I'll have that done next week. Maybe I won't. I, I will certainly have Between Two Fires done by next week, so we can chat about that. I'm just rambling here at this point. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, tuning, in, tuning in, as always, and I'll see you next weekend. Hope you have a beautiful week of reading. Um, share with me down below what you're reading. I always love, uh, love to hear. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. All right, see you guys.